Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials. Today we are starting the second season in the Java Programming Tutorial series. It is the Intermediate Java Programming series. We are going to be going, uh, starting at array lists and going all the way over to the sorting methods. Uh, we are going to be getting very heavily into uh, Windows application forms, which I know a lot of you have been looking forward to quite a bit. I've gotten quite a few requests for that. so. Without further ado, this is a bit of a long tutorial, so we're going to go ahead and get started now. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to import java.util.asterisk. This basically imports everything inside the util uh, library, uh, all the classes inside that and all the methods inside of those. Uh, we've worked with the scanners that is inside the java.util uh, library. So we're going to go ahead and move forward with that, learn a few more of the items that are in the util library and get comfortable with them, primarily array lists, which is the next step up from arrays. I've created our class and our uh, main method. Let's go ahead and start right now by creating a second method. We're going to call it a private static array list. Shuffle names, and we're going to call that array list A. So basically what we've created here is a method that will output an array list and receives only one array list, which we are going to subtitle A. That method is going to be called shuffle names. We'll get use of that soon. So let's start with our variables. We have quite a few today. We have array list. Let's call that fn1 for now. I'm going to show you how to change all the names of your variables later to save you on typing now and time later. fn1 equals new array list. Put parentheses right there. And then we're going to do scanner input equals new scanner. That shouldn't be anything foreign to you. We did that in pretty much every single tutorial last series. Uh, we're also going to do strings, two of them. We're going to do do again. Let's actually just call that da1. And we're also going to add another string called, uh, let's see, what was it? Oh, yes, uh, temporary name storage or TNS for now. Put that there. We're going to do ints. We're going to do one called counter and one called sentinel. I'm going to assign sentinel to the value of 256 right off the bat. And we're going to assign counter to 0. You can assign sentinel to whatever you want, but please remember that sentinel values for your loops are values that cannot theoretically be reached without excessive trying later down the line. So we want to stop the program regardless of how many names the player person enters at 256 names. So we're going to put the sentinel value at 256. So then we're going to create a while loop. Please remember you don't want to capitalize the W there, or you're going to get an error asking that you need to put a colon at the end of it. So it just causes more problems later down the line. And put counter is less than sentinel. And that's going to be the terminating clause for the while loop. So since we don't want every single user to have to enter 256 names to exit the program, we're going to need to put some closing piece of code right there and every single iteration of the loop that way they can cut out any time they want so we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, a system dot out dot print line please enter name i'm going to put a space and we're going to add a number of the name so we're going to do plus counter plus one the reason why we do plus one is because counter starts at zero and the names are going to start at one logically for the users. So that's why we do that. Put a period there, close the parentheses, put a colon to end the process. System dot in, oh, hold on, my bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do TNS equals input dot next. And then we're going to just add that into the array list, which is right now FNL, or FN1, I'm sorry, not FNL. So FN1.add, which is how we add items to an array list. FN1.add TNS, and that will add whatever is stored in temporary name storage to the next available spot in the array list. 
please keep in mind there are two different types of variables. We have primitive variable types and we have reference variable types. So any of these that are capitalized, the first letter being capitalized, those are reference variables. So array lists are references, scanners are references, strings are references. And basically what those do is we have a, a class somewhere called array list, a class somewhere called scanner, a class somewhere called string. And we're creating a reference, um, an instance of that class and giving it a name. That way we have access to all the methods inside of it and it acts like that. For instance, the method for string, or rather the class for string, is specifically designed to store groupings of letters. Nothing more. So, and same thing with the list, it's just specifically designed to store groupings of items. Different primitive variable types like integers, bools, characters, so on and so forth. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're working with this. Once we've entered that, we want to ask them if they're finished entering the names. So system.out.println. Are you, oops, I need to capitalize that. Are you finished entering names? And we want to give them their options, y or n. So basically what we're going to be doing when we create this is we're going to be looking for a lowercase y or a capital Y. It doesn't matter if they enter N or Z or Q or B or F. As long as they don't enter Y, we're going to continue the loop. And same thing goes as long as they enter the first character of the string as Y, they could enter yes or friggin' Yakima, the city in Washington, I believe. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as the first letter is a Y, you're good to go. So we're going to go do again. Oh, we did DA1 equals uh, input dot next. Again, we're doing next because we are hooking strings. The reason why we don't do next char is because it doesn't exist, sadly. So we have to do everything we plan on doing in characters, in strings, and then compensate for it later with um, da1.char at, and then put the location in the string, and that will ensure that we are looking at the very first place in the string, the very first location for the character that we are looking for. And again, when you're working with characters, one character, single quote, more than one character, double quotes, easy enough. Um, so da1.char at 0 equals equals capital Y. Again, because we want to be looking for the lowercase or the capital, since they're welcome to enter both, we don't uh, <laughs> segregate based on capitalization preferences. And we're going to go ahead and set that. If if that returns true, we're going to go counter equals sentinel. Basically what this does is it sets the counter's value to sentinel value. That way they're both equal, thus rendering this false, since it's looking for less than. And sentinel is at 256, so the highest counter can be and iterate through again is 255. Of course, we need to actually iterate it so that we don't have an endless loop, even if they do decide they want to enter 256 names. So counter plus plus will solve that issue right there. Now we are finished with the while loop. We just need to go ahead and continue on with this. So we're going to go system.out.println. Would you like to shuffle your friends' names? question mark y or n so basically what we're doing here is we're asking them if they want to go on to the shuffle names class save yourself some time go ahead and copy everything up to da1 right here technically we could have copied the system dot out dot print line but at a certain point that gets so burnt into your mind that it's second nature to just type it you can spend your time adjusting this stuff if you like um, I do it because I'm a neat freak, but you don't necessarily have to. All right, so we can go ahead and just change this guy to, we're going to go fn1 equals shuffle names. We're going to be calling on the shuffle names method, and we're going to be sending fn1 to the method, and that, well, well actually, that, that will be the end of the if statement. Below that, we need to actually output the the array list once we have it returned from shuffle names. So we're going to go system.out.println. 
and just put fn1. That's not the beauty. Since it's a reference type and it actually has an output method inside of it, all you have to do is type in the name of it, the name of the uh, the instance, and it will output everything that's stored inside of it. It's a beautiful thing. So let's go ahead and carry on here in our shuffle names class. First thing we want to do is collections with a capital C. We are calling on another uh, class dot shuffle a. So basically, this will call on the collection collections class, the shuffles method, the shuffle method inside the collections class, and it will shuffle the array list that we've plugged into it. We're going to return the array list, return a and that will solve the entire program right there. So let's go ahead and hit F5. All right, as we can see, I have done something wrong here. What does it say? Ah, that's why. We need to do system.in. Here I am talking about how it should be muscle memory by now. Collections. There we go. The, la the only thing you should have pop up in this compiler output here is a warning telling you that the add members of the array list are not checked. We're going to worry about that in a later tutorial. Uh, basically it's saying that you're not triple checking that all the variables you're punching into this are of the same format. It's easy enough to fix later down the line, but for time's sake, because this is a long tutorial, I'm not going to worry about it this time. And if it's not an error, the program will compile and run. You just need to be conscious about what you're doing. Push F2. As you see, the program starts up. Please enter name 1. I'm going to do John. I'm going to say no. I'm going to do Jim. No. Jackson. No. Richard. And one more. Let's do Paul. And then it's going to ask you, are you finished entering your names? We've been saying no this whole time. Let's say yes. You can do lowercase y. Would you like to shuffle your friends' names? Since we just copy this, logically, if we test one, we've tested the other. So we've got the lowercase y there. We can te test the uppercase y here. Push yes. Remember, I did John, Jim, Jackson, Richard, and Paul. It is now Paul, John, Jim, Richard, Jackson. So that is clearly shuffled. It is safe to say that the shuffle names method is operating properly. So, say you want to add, or better yet, say you want to add all of the names into your array list, only put them backwards. So the last one you enter is at the very beginning of the array list. So let's go ahead and just put a zero comma there, which is another override method. Uh, so it's telling you're telling it now which location you want all the new values to go into. Remember that the, the lowest location is not 1, it is 0, because computers think that way. So if you want to avoid getting an error, you got to put 0. And if you want to put a higher number, you need to put a try-catch statement. That way people can't crash the program by, say, trying to enter a variable at slot 2 when you have no variables in the array list. I'm going to go ahead and recompile it. Again, the, the warning is the only thing you get, F2. I'm going to do um, Jim... No, John, no, Jackson, no, Richard, and Paul. Yes, and I'm not going to shuffle it this time so you can see what I'm talking about. We did Jim, John, Jackson, Richard, and Paul, so we have those all in reverse order, which is just the way we wanted it to come out. The last thing I want to show you in terms of array lists is how to remove items once you have a fully created array list. This will come in more handy when we're working with forms as opposed to when we're working with the console because it's really difficult to create an array list in the program and then have it removed at the same time. That's much more code, so we're just not going to go there today. We're just going to do remove. And then the next time you compiled this and ran it, it would remove whatever's in the zeroth location of the array list. So that's just something to keep in mind. Those are the four, or rather three, basic features of an array list. Um, it doesn't have a set length. It automatically adjusts itself to how many, how many variables you have in it. So when you start off the program, it has zero length. Then when you enter the, a value in the zeroth place, it has a length of two, or a length of one, rather so on and so forth. So that's just something to keep in mind. Last thing I wanted to show you for this tutorial is how to change your variable names. Go ahead and push Control F or you can probably go edit find, uh, yeah, find and replace. 
Well, we're going to start with FN1. We're going to change it to friends names. I don't need a capital F. Friends names. So you can see why I'd want to set that as FN1 to begin with. And the reason why I set it to FN1 is because you need to be conscientious about what you're changing, naming these variables. Because uh, it could be a letter combination of FN somewhere else in the code. You may not realize it. And when you try to change it, you completely screw up your code. So when you're done, just click on the replace all. It'll tell you how many occurrences it's replaced and replaced five this time. So we have friends names now and every instance of FN will be friends names. Uh, the next one we need is DA1. DA1 we can just call do again. That's difficult just because the capital A replace all. And the last one we have is TNS. This one is temporary name storage as I was talking earlier uh, replace all three occurrences of that one and then we can just save the program compile it to make sure we didn't have any issues okay so yeah it's, it's coming back with an issue with the remove there we go and we all we have now is the warning again so we are good to go that is it for this tutorial if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below i do read all of your comments i may not respond to some of them but i do read them all uh, if you like this tutorial please like it and let me know what i did right if you don't like it please dislike it and let me know what i did wrong and i look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial thank you have a good day